Hey guys, I'm up in the attic putting on final coats of clear on the Westinghouse TV cabinet and I wanted to talk a little bit about what I'm using. So if you watch my older videos, you may see me talk about using deft lacquer, which I liked a lot, especially because of the adjustable spray nozzle they had. But uh, deft doesn't make spray lacquer anymore. They were bought out by another company and they decided to discontinue the spray line. They, I think they just sell it in cans now, if at all. So I switched over to Mohawk, which is a fine product, and I've been using stuff like this, gloss and semi-gloss, and this is nitrocellulose-based lacquer. Very similar to the Deft, uh, but no adjustable spray nozzle, but uh, even so, it worked fine, good flow out, produces a fine finish. But more recently, I've switched to pre-catalyzed lacquer. Again, semi-gloss and clear. Well, uh, I didn't really know what pre-cat meant, uh, but uh, the supplier I've been ordering from was no longer carrying the nitrocellulose stuff, or at least I didn't see it on their website, so I figured I'd give the pre-cat a try. Well, last night I spent some time reading up on what it actually means and I will include a link in the description which does a great job explaining all the different types of finishes from polyurethane and various flavors of lacquer. So apparently what this is, or I'll explain what traditional lacquer is, it's um, the lacquer substance itself and a solvent. And a solvent evaporates and the lacquer substance uh, polymerizes I guess, or the chains link and it forms a clear, hard surface. Well, in order to make that uh, work well, they use a lot of solvents, high volatility content, and uh, generally the better the lacquer, the more intense it is, which is a bit of a problem, uh, not just for the, the guy spraying it, you really need to use good ventilation and ideally a respirator, because the fumes are really intense, but also in terms of transportation and environmental regulations on um, producing it. So they've been doing a lot of tinkering. Like you may see uh, things like um, combination products like uh, I think there's acrylic lacquer or something to that effect. There's some, some uh, water-based finishes uh, appearing on the market. And then there's this pre-catalyzed stuff and there's also post-catalyzed lacquer. What that is, is they don't rely entirely on solvents. There's a catalyzing agent in here, uh, a type of acid. Uh, the post stuff means you buy it uncatalyzed and you mix it up yourself, like if you have your own spraying rig. Because part of the problem with the catalyzed lacquer, it has a limited shelf life. But uh, apparently they've uh, formulated it well enough that uh, they've got a decent shelf life with this stuff. So pre-catalyzed, it's already mixed up with that catalyst. So uh, it is noticeable that it sp both smells different and it's not as intense and it produces a really, really fine finish. So that is what I've been using on this cabinet. Uh, just lightly sanded the top but here's uh, the frame which I sprayed a few hours ago. And I'll show you what this top looks like after I spray it. Uh, I think this, yeah, this is the side I did last night. See if I can get that. Yeah, so, yeah, produces a fine finish. I'm hoping I won't need to rub this cabinet out. So I've just been doing one horizontal surface at a time, rotating the cabinet on one side, the other, the front, and then I'll finally do the top and try and not to get much overspray. So, example, this is the front of the cabinet. I'm going to spray it from the back so that the overspray kind of goes over that way. If I was to spray it from this side, when I do this front edge here, there's going to be overspray that's going to hit this surface and make it rough and fuzzy. But if I go from this side, and I'm careful, so the overspray will kind of shoot off that side, that side, and the front, and the back, I don't care so much about. Plus, it's got this big opening so I could always turn around when I get to the back and spray this way. But again, there's no surface back here, so it's not really an issue. So, uh, and as for sanding, that's uh, just 320 grit. I don't really see any reason to go finer than that. I uh, just want to get off uh, the rough fuzzies, any high spots. Eliminate a little bit of the orange peel. 
and then uh, it's, it's nice and cool. Um, well, <laughs> I say that relatively speaking, it's about 80 degrees up here, but it was uh, pushing uh, 100 the other day, which is getting a little too warm to be spraying this stuff. I think it's just between uh, 65 and 90 on the can, and I find the cooler works a little better if you want to put on a heavy coat and get it to flow out well, because it takes longer for it to, um, to uh, set up. And you want to have that flow time so that the little fine droplets have time to blend together. All right, so I will give this a few heavy coats. And uh, if it comes out really nice, I think that'll be it. If not, uh, another light sanding and one more round of spraying. And if I just can't get it looking good enough, I will rub it out. But I'm hoping uh, I won't need to. Well, it's hot as heck outside, and it's going to be for the next few days, so I think I'm just going to hunker down in front of the air conditioning and uh, try rubbing this cabinet out a little. So, I'm starting the top here with some 2F pumice. And a felt block soaked in this water. Over this for a little bit, clean it off, see how things look, and progress as I see fit. So, well, I'll just do a little bit of this now and clean it off and show you the difference. Take that much if the lack is pretty smooth to begin with. Definitely better. And you can pretty clearly see the difference between here and here. Not, not quite good enough yet, so I'll do it for a little bit longer. Here's the result after rubbing out the top. It took about an hour. Yeah, it's boring. Yeah, it's kind of messy, but in the end, I'm always glad that I took the time to do it because it just makes a much, much nicer finish. Not just to look at, but the way it feels. Only problem I encountered was right here. Gotta be careful when you get to the edges. You don't burn through them. And I was being really careful along the edge, but even so, something funky happened here. Perhaps this was sticking up a bit high? I don't know. But I definitely sanded over this area and didn't have any trouble. And when I was uh, rubbing it with that felt block, I didn't dig in and, go and burn over the edge. Uh, what can happen is when you're, when you're buffing it, if you put a lot of pressure so that it all the pressure is riding just on the edge, you can really go through the finish fast. Well, regardless, uh, it's not that bad. It's just on the edge here, and it's kind of a darker area. It's not in the main reddish-brown mahogany area, so I could just take like a dark, uh, dark brown uh, touch-up marker and go over that, and then put a little uh, semi-gloss lacquer over it and buff this area, and uh, that should be no problem. Otherwise, I'm really happy with the way this looks. So much so. Uh, I don't know if I'll go to the next finer grit or not, because I think this looks really good as it is, and it'll look even better with some wax on it. Plus, it'll save me some time not having to go to the finer grit. I finished rubbing out the cabinet. First the 2F, then the 4F pumice, and the deluxing compound, and I think that looks just fine. No reason to go to the rotten stone. Alright, so that leaves doing finishing up the frame and uh, control panel and then uh, installing the safety glass. Oh, and also that bit that goes in here. May need to repaint that, uh, may not. It's kind of an odd color, so I'm inclined to uh, just try to clean it as it is and reinstall it.
Well, I thought I was almost done with the cabinet, but unfortunately, a little issue cropped up. I was given uh, one final light sanding to this frame in preparation for spraying a final coat on it when I noticed that there was bubbling in each of the corners. And when I poked at it, the bubbling kind of cracked and, and uh, fell away like an eggshell. So, and this was the worst time there, so what appears to happen is it was, it was outgassing from something down in each corner. Now, I didn't re-glue this, so the old original glue is down in there, and on top of that, let's see, well, I stripped it, and then I sealed it with shellac, sprayed lacquer sanding sealer, then toner, and uh, then the pre-cat semi-gloss lacquer. So something in that mix wasn't happy, even though they should all be compatible with each other. Except maybe the original glue they used. Now I had this up in the attic for a while, and uh, things have gotten much warmer around here, and our attic fan motor burned out. So uh, I knew it was getting really hot up there. Well, I brought a th uh, thermometer up there, and it was... Uh, pushing 110 degrees, so that may have also precipitated this problem. Well, I'm not going to strip it down and start over. What I'm going to do is uh, paint on a little bit of the lacquer sanding sealer. I ran out of it, so I just went home and got a fresh can. Uh, it's a universal sealer. Uh, I've had good luck with it with sealing uh, problematic uh, finishes. So uh, I'll just manually brush on a bit of this in each corner and put a couple coats and then uh, use some uh, touch-up markers or whatnot to get the color back and then brush uh, on some lacquer to build up the thickness and then hopefully spray on a final coat and blend it together and it won't look too horrible. Now I'm turning my attention to the speaker. If you recall, the speaker is mounted on the cabinet so that it faces upwards, which means that it collects a lot of dirt. So I'm going to take a soft brush, a little bit damp, and see if I can clean some of this off. I've already gone over the dry brush and I got as much off as I could. The rest is stuck on there. A little too much. Yeah, it seems to be clean. I'll use a dry cloth to kind of block up some of the moisture. Uh -oh, I'll keep going around and doing that slowly. I don't want to get it too damp or put apply too much pressure because I don't want to damage the paper, of course. The speaker's looking much better now, and I've got the cabinet together. Not entirely happy about this frame, the way I had to touch it up in the corners, but I figure I may very well redo the whole thing anyways. If I ever get some decals made and it's rather easy to get off. Got the safety glass remounted and the screen bezel, so really all that's left is this bit, the speaker grill, right here, so that's where the speaker mounts, and then the whole thing gets screwed in from below. Now I thought it was just dirty at first, and I started wiping it down, and then I realized, no, it's actually rust. And as I cleaned the rust off, the paint was coming off with it. So since I've gone this far, what I'm going to do is pull out the nails around the periphery, pop the whole thing off, remove all the rust, and repaint it. And the painting is pretty crude. They were trying to simulate the look of the mahogany. So it's basically brown with some black stripes put on. So I can certainly use the same toner lacquer I used on this and then put some stripes on myself with just uh, like a, with a brush. That shouldn't be too difficult. And once it's all cleaned up, I'll uh, get that remounted and then do some, uh, do some final tweaks on the chassis. 
My uh, goal is to get that Filco 7008 visual alignment generator working and then uh, use it to do the alignment for the chassis. And then finally put the thing all back together.